Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be discussing Albus Dumbledore, Gellert Grindelwald, and their plan to rule over the Muggle world. With uncertainty regarding future releases of Fantastic Beasts films, it's entirely possible that we won't get to witness a certain side of Dumbledore, a glimpse into his past that outlines his, at one time, questionable morality, his plan for establishing wizarding dominance, and his relationship with the dark wizard Gellert Grindelwald. If you don't know Dumbledore's backstory and you've only seen the Harry Potter films, then let me summarize it quickly. Dumbledore wasn't always good. Like everyone else, the wise all-knowing Hogwarts headmaster also had to face some demons before discovering who he truly was. As a young man, Dumbledore showed a lot of promise. He was an extremely innately talented wizard, and while studying at Hogwarts, his professors claimed he could do things with a wand that they had never seen before. After graduating from Hogwarts in June 1899, Albus returned to his home of Godric's Hollow to be with his family after the death of his mother, Kendra Dumbledore. Albus, being the eldest sibling, knew that he would have to take care of his younger siblings, particularly Ariana, who had problems controlling her magical abilities. It was during this time that Albus met Gellert Grindelwald, a young man who had moved to the small village to live with his aunt Patilda Bagshot a woman that happened to be a family friend of the Dumbledores and Grindelwald's great aunt. Immediately recognizing each other's magical prowess and amazing magical capabilities, the two boys hit it off, and that's when their scheming began. You see, Grindelwald, who had been expelled from Durmstrang, was certainly a morally questionable character. After becoming close with Dumbledore, he shared with him his plans to overthrow the International Statute of Secrecy, hoping to establish a new world hierarchy in which wizards were placed above muggles. As the two grew closer and closer, Dumbledore became equally as passionate about this plan, and the two eventually coined the term for the greater good, which suggested that wizarding rule would eventually benefit everyone. In the summer of 1899, when Dumbledore was just 17 years old, he wrote Grindelwald a letter discussing their plans. The letter shows Dumbledore speaking in a tone so unlike what we're accustomed to. The same letter was published in Rita Skeeter's The Life and Lies of Albus Dumbledore. Gellert, your point about wizard dominance being for the muggles' own good, this, I think, is the crucial point. Yes, we've been given power, and yes, that power gives us the right to rule, but it also gives us responsibilities over the ruled. We must stress this point, it will be the foundation stone upon which we build. Where we are opposed, as we surely will be, this must be the basis of all our counter-arguments. We seize control for the greater good. And from this, it follows that where we meet resistance, we must use only the force that is necessary and no more. This was your mistake at Durmstrang, but I do not complain, because if you had not been expelled, we would never have met Albus. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, we want only freedom, freedom to be ourselves. The disapproval of cowards is praise to the brave.